One of the biggest problems Splatoon 2 has is special spam. I'm sure you've all had that one Neo Sploosh in your solo game who's farming missiles at the corner of a map, and there seems to be no shortage of both weapons or players who just want to try to get double digit special counts by the end of the game. Special spam is something you hear about at any skill level, so it's something I feel really needs to be addressed. With Splatoon 3 on the horizon, I want to go over potential solutions to this problem, what Nintendo should have done, and the best solution, one they figured out in the first game, that they really need to bring back. Today's video is going into one of the biggest problems Splatoon has, so if you enjoy it and want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. One thing to note about Special Spam is it wasn't really present in the first game, and there's quite a few reasons as to why that is. First of all, Splatoon 1 maps are tiny. I think a lot of people who haven't played the first game or just haven't seen it for a while forget this, but for an example, let's take a look at Urchin Underpass. It's pretty dang cramped in mid, and there's not a lot of room. And if we go to Reef, Splatoon 2's equivalent of this map, it is absolutely huge by comparison. Horden maps work the same way. Look at Piranha Pit in Splatoon 1. Pretty small, pretty cramped map. And then in Splatoon 2, absolutely massive. Splatoon 2's stage design just leads to maps being way bigger than they were in the first game, which just means there's way more ground to paint for specials. Another important change is the increase in painting power that many weapons received. One of the most notable examples would be the E-Leader. E-Leader in Splatoon 1 barely painted, that was part of its weapon design. But in Splatoon 2, especially with the addition of main power, E-Leader is actually pretty dang good at turfing, and it's part of what makes the weapon so strong right now. Even weapons that shouldn't really be painters can paint fairly well in this game. Obviously, some weapons have weaker painting power, and not every weapon is a painter, but as a whole, more weapons paint better in this game than they did in the first game. The special design changes from Splatoon 1 to 2 are another big factor in this. Splatoon 1 specials, while benefiting from coordination, didn't really rely on it as much. Whereas for Splatoon 2, the specials were made to be built around coordination and be much more centralized in gameplay. So getting a certain special to push back in is really important for quite a few weapons in this game, and especially for support weapons, which leads to many playstyles of focusing on always having a special ready for team fights. Finally, Splatoon 1 didn't really have any low points for special weapons. Now, points for special were attached to the specials themselves, not the weapon kits, but for all the specials, Bomb Rush, Bubbler and Ink Strike were all 180p, Echo Locator and Kraken were 200p, and Ink Zooka was 220p. The only special to be lower than 180p in Splatoon 1 was Killer Whale at 160. If you contrast this with Splatoon 2, there are several weapon kits with 170p, 160p, and even two weapons with 150p, lower than any Splatoon 1 weapon. There's also one more factor, but I'll get into it later. These main five things overall led to Splatoon 2 having a higher special output when compared to Splatoon 1. Another important thing to note is Nintendo's balance patches. Now, in my opinion, and the same for many others, Nintendo's balance patches seem to be trying to make the game as diverse as possible. And on paper, this makes sense. Having more viable weapons, more viable maps, more viable specials, etc. is good for the game's lifespan. And in truth, having a diverse meta is a great thing for the game. However, it's not the only important thing to be addressed in balance patches. If the game is balanced but everything is unbelievably broken or unbelievably weak, there's still a problem. And regardless of how balanced the game is, having more special spam weapons is only going to make the game more unenjoyable. Which is where I draw a big problem with Nintendo's balance patches. In many cases, they'll ignore or even help weapons fall into a special spam category just to make the game more balanced. In terms of ignoring a special spam weapon, Junior would probably be the best example. Junior really only fit into the meta competing with NZAP because it had a higher output of specials, and so to keep Junior from falling out of the meta entirely, Nintendo refused to increase its points for special or nerf its painting power, and thus Junior never really lost its ability to spam an incredibly large amount of armors. In terms of balancing weapons to make them more special spammy, points for special nerfs are probably the easiest one to go by. There are so many weapons where Nintendo doesn't really seem to know what to do to buff them, so they just settle for minus 10 points for special. And this can lead to a ton of problems, but it doesn't even have to be points for specials. Flings a roller continued to get buff after buff after buff to vertical flick making it better at painting and faster. And Flingzer right now is one of the main special spam culprits, even in competitive play. 
Rather than making the weapon better overall, or making it more well-rounded by buffing the horizontal flick, Nintendo just settled at making it a better special spammer because, hey, it works, right? Now it's good, that's all that matters. Now, yes, some weapons got increased points for specials. Most notably, if you had a weapon that was really good in this game, it would get increased points for special. So most of the strong main weapons have higher points. For example, Vanilla Rapid, meta at the start of the game, 200p. Slasher Deco, meta during the baller patches of 2.0s. Now it's 220p. Custom Explosher, one of the best zones weapons in the game, 220p. Custom Dually Squatchers, meta for a while, 220p. If a weapon in this game is 220p, it probably was the center of a meta at one point. So Nintendo only really fixes a problem on weapons that are good enough to not need a higher special output. And the last big thing worth noting in terms of patches is Nintendo doesn't really seem to understand that when you buff a weapon's painting power, you are increasing its special spam capability, and thus it's a very drastic buff. One of the best examples would be 52, which got a painting buff specifically to the very end of the shots, one of the most important areas to buff, because you can turf over other players easily. Why does this weapon that already has good slaying capability, a wall and a solid kit for keeping itself alive, need to be able to get near 10 Booyah Bombs a game? I have no idea, but now it's everywhere. While Nintendo definitely had the opportunity to fix things with balance patches, in terms of special spam, it seems it was more tossed to the side in order to improve the game balance, and many more weapons were made special spammers that weren't even special spammers upon release. Now, it's finally time to talk about Splatoon 1 and patch 2.7.0, perhaps the best balance patch Splatoon ever had. On top of fixing many gameplay issues and making things much more balanced, it introduced a brand new mechanic, Special Depletion. Every weapon kit was sorted into having either Light, Medium, or Heavy Depletion. Light Depletion would lose 40% of their special upon death, Medium Depletion would lose 60%, and become the new standard. And finally, Heavy Depletion would lose 75% of their special upon death. Not only did this decrease special output as a whole, since the medium special depletion loss was now 60 instead of 50%, but it also introduced having special depletion based on a weapon's kit, which would later form into points for special for Splatoon 2. Special Depletion introduces real counterplay to dealing with special spam. What's one of the best ways to keep people from getting a high quantity of specials? Killing them. Imagine if the main missile or armor weapons were heavy depletion. Supports are already prime targets for slayers, but now they would need to be even more careful, which means that for weapons that do have to focus those specials, they have an increased skill floor, since they now get punished much more harshly for mispositioning. And if you're an aggressive player, you get rewarded for shutting those kinds of people down. It's the perfect solution. It also just introduces a new way to influence special output. You don't just have to touch points for special. We can influence the amount of special they lose when they die, and how many points they need to get special in the first place. It gives more options to the devs when they have to balance things. And now, with everything laid out on the table, here's what I would do to fix special spam for Splatoon 3. There are three changes I would do to ensure special spam isn't a problem in Splatoon 3. The first thing would be making the default points for special 200, with a minimum of 180 and a maximum of 220. This would ensure that specials take a good amount of time to get, and the minimum of 180 ensures no weapon could be entirely focused on special spamming in order to be good, because you can't make them have a drastically low points for special. It would force the devs to fix the problem in other areas. Increasing points for special by 10 to 20 isn't that much. Overwatch is a game with a similar problem to what Splatoon had, and they had a global increase of 12%, which in the case of charging ultimates in that game is much more drastic. So I think it's a solution that would work fairly well. Next up is a simple one. If Nintendo is going to increase weapons painting power, there should also be an increase in points for special to ensure they don't become special spammers and that the buff doesn't become too drastic. And most importantly, reintroduce special depletion. I would do this a little bit differently than in Splatoon 1. First, I would keep this to the specials themselves rather than weapon kits. Points for specials work fine for the weapon kits themselves, and it's mostly global specials, for example, Tena Missiles, which we already know is confirmed for Splatoon 3, that need to be heavy depletion. And that way, weaker specials, such as Splashdown in this game, could end up being light depletion to help them out quite a lot. 
Secondly, I would make the special depletion a little bit less drastic. Light depletion can still be 40%, but I would put medium at 55 instead of 60%, and heavy depletion at 70 instead of 75%. Just to make sure it's not too important, considering we've increased the points for special default to 200. And there you go, my thoughts on and solution to special spam for Splatoon 3. Be sure to let me know what you guys think in the comments and if you want special depletion to return. And with that all being said, have a wonderful day.